What's up, Samurai Assassins? Fat Samurai Guy here, and welcome to another episode of The Movie Dojo, where we discuss martial arts cinema and action films. Today on The Dojo, I am going to review Dragon Blade. Here's a quick plot synopsis. <coughs> when corrupt Roman leader Tiberius arrives with a giant army to claim the Silk Road, Huo An and his group of trained warriors team up with an elite legion of defected Roman soldiers led by General Lucius to maintain the delicate balance of power in the region. To protect his country and his new friends, Huo An gathers the warriors of the 36 nations together to fight Tiberius in an incredible epic battle. Now I'm going to give you the good, I'm going to give you the bad, I'm going to give you the badass. First up, the good. This is a very fantastic looking movie directed by Daniel Lee. The cinematography is well done. It's a very beautiful looking movie. But that kind of goes with the territory with these Hong Kong period piece films because 80% of the time, all of their movies look very good. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a straight to theater uh, period piece Hong Kong film and I was just like, Ugh, this is like shit or it looks cheap. I enjoyed the soundtrack to the movie as well. And of course, another great performance from Jackie Chan. I mean, at this point in this guy's career, he really can't really phone it in if he wanted to. <laughs> he's just always been a very likable actor. And he has proved over time that he's not just a comedic actor. <laughs> he not just brings the comedy. There is some comedy moments in this film. And now for the bad. The plot in this film should be simple to follow, but it kind of turns up and gets a little messy towards the middle, towards the end of the film. There's definitely a lot of characters, a lot of stuff going on, and there could be moments for you where you're just like, okay, well, who's that now? Wait, who betrayed who? Wait, oh, who's this group now? Wait, what? Wait, who showed up and did that now? So in cases like this, I go to my usual, whoever the good guy fights are the bad guys. <laughs> Some of the problems I had with the film was um, the fact that, you know, this is supposed to be based off true events. And sometimes the movie tries to give you these dramatic moments and tries to get emotional and tug on your heartstrings a little bit. It didn't really work for me. I think if they would have taken the movie more seriously and the subject more seriously and had no comedy in the movie at all and fleshed out their characters and their storytelling a little bit more, I think that would have worked a lot more for me. Don't get me wrong, I mean the movie is still entertaining, but some moments in the movie kind of came off as cheesy to me. Like, for example, John Cusack and his defected Roman soldiers are brought in to help Jackie Chan and his team finish building the city in 15 days. Come on. <laughs> but you know, we gotta work together, man. You know, it's, it's, we gotta do it for peace, man. We gotta come together, you know what I'm saying? Why can't we all just get along? There was even a moment where they took a break from helping to build the city. And uh, Jackie Chan and his crew are sitting on the side and they start training and doing their katas and stuff. And then all of a sudden the crowd starts coming around and they're like, yeah, this is cool to watch. And then all of a sudden John Cusack and his team come around and they start training next to them. And I was just like, okay, <laughs> this is kind of cheesy. I mean, at this point, I was expecting a straight up dance off, okay? I mean, that's what it was looking like. I was just kind of like, all right, fine, let's, okay. But when both sides started sparring with each other, that was kind of cool. I like that. As always, English dubbing sucks, okay, in Hong Kong films. English dubbing is garbage. Now, Adrian Brody and John Cusack's character is really their voice, but everyone else, it's just bad. And there was this female actress that you didn't see her face till the end of the movie, and when she showed up, she had this big moment, you know, this big speech, and it was garbage. <laughs> her acting was bad. Now, let's get to my two big worries. Adrian Brody <laughs> and John Cusack in a martial arts epic period piece action extravaganza. I remember seeing the poster to this film and I was just kind of like, oh God, <laughs> like, no, <laughs> no, what is this? What is this garbage? Out of all the actors out there <laughs> that we can afford, John Cusack? Somebody sat down and was looking over the script <laughs> and said, you know what? To play this Roman general, I think John Cusack. <laughs> and I can honestly say that John Cusack's acting is not bad, okay? It's not bad. It's not great. It's not like it's going to stand out in the movie. Uh, it's good enough. It's good enough to kind of get through the story and see where his character goes. But the problem I had with his acting though, even though it's fine and you can get through it, the problem I had though was that it was like a combination of I am a 
I am a Roman general slash what the fuck am I doing in this movie? <laughs> slash fuck it, I'm gonna do the best I can. Type of look and acting on his face, his whole performance. That's all I was thinking was those three things <laughs> combined in his performance. But it's fine. It's you can get it's not bad. Now, Adrian Brody <laughs> was probably on set and looked at John Cusack and was like, ah, that's that's too uh it's too normal, too boring, too bland. Let me see if I can uh, top that. And he does. <laughs> it was like Cusack was too bland, but Adrian Brody was like too over the top, but it wasn't really that over the top. I actually wanted him to be more over the top and be more crazy uh, just for my, you know, entertainment. But he, he, he was pulling out the British. <laughs> Brody was Britishing. And I thought it was funny because out of this whole entire huge Roman legion, nobody else was speaking British. <laughs> and really, the Romans aren't British anyway. But, you know, with period piece dramas, everyone kind of uses that dialect because it just seems to work. And was it just me, or did Adrian Brody lose his British by the end of the movie? <laughs> now for the badass. So the story's a little messy. The story's a little cheesy. Why can't we be friends? Why can't we be friends? So what's left? Action! And I'm happy to say, the fight sequences in this film are very well done. You will not be let down. When you got Jackie Chan as action director, come on, would you expect any less? We got some pretty good one-on-one -on -one fighting duels. And of course, at the end for our finale, the action's pretty much epic. Now, back to my two major concerns that I had. How did John Cusack and Adrian Brody handle the fight sequences? They weren't that bad. I mean, I have to give them props. Very unexpected. I mean, obviously, I'm sure when the camera zoomed back and the crazier movements were happening, obviously, I'm sure they were both were stunt doubled which makes sense. But when the camera zoomed in enough and you can kind of see them doing the movement, they actually didn't do that bad. Adrian Brody seemed the better of the two. He seemed a lot more natural in his movements in the fight choreography. So despite its flaws, overall, Dragon Blade was very entertaining and I definitely recommend that you guys check it out. So I give Dragon Blade 3.8 out of five ninja stars. All right, that's it for today's episode of the movie dojo if you've seen dragon blade let me know what you thought about it in the comments below tune in next week for my next review of special id starring donnie Yen. see you next time like share subscribe like share subscribe